To the untrained eye, some of the symptoms of rising damp and condensation may appear similar. In this video, we will go through the difference between rising damp and condensation. The various forms of damp are often misdiagnosed, but there are key differences between them. This helps us to understand the source of the damp. Difference number one, the source of the moisture. It is extremely important to understand that rising damp can only be diagnosed when you can determine if the damp stains and moisture found on your internal walls are coming from moisture in the ground that has been soaked up through the masonry or possibly from penetrating damp. This process is called capillary action. The only reason that rising damp is a controversial issue in some circles is because poorly trained or fraudulent contractors have misdiagnosed rising damp in the past. Peter Cox has a team of fully trained and qualified surveyors who know exactly how to determine the source of moisture in the property to avoid this problem. Condensation, on the other hand, generally comes from moisture that is created within the property. The most noticeable result being the growth of mould on surfaces, particularly in corners and around windows. This is where there is a lack of air circulation or where cold bridging occurs. Quite simply, this is because we create water vapour in our homes through unavoidable daily tasks such as boiling water, cooking, showering and washing. Even breathing contributes to the amount of moisture in the home. If this damp, humid air remains trapped inside the property, it will eventually condense on cold surfaces like windows, walls and tiles. Upon contact with these cold surfaces, the humid air reaches dew point. This means it will release the moisture it is holding and you are left with beads of water on the surface that we call condensation. Difference number two, what do they look like? The biggest problem in telling these two types of damp apart is that some of the symptoms can appear very similar. For example, damp problems such as stains on walls, peeling wallpaper and musty or damp smells are not unique to either rising damp or condensation. However, rising damp will only affect ground floor walls, whereas damp stains around the ceiling or on higher levels of the property are likely to be condensation or penetrating damp. Rising damp does have some characteristic traits that can help you identify if it is the cause of your damp problems. Tide mark damp stains are a common sign of rising damp. These will only appear on ground floor walls and usually rise to a height of around one metre. Although in a heated property, the damp may only extend just over the skirting board as the warmth of the room draws the moisture out. Another sign of rising damp is visible salts left on the surface of the plaster. Groundwater frequently contains dissolved salts that rise in the capillaries of the masonry along with the water. As the water evaporates, the salts are left behind, leaving a residue and creating fluffy salt deposits. These salts can also be coloured. In areas with iron in the groundwater, the salts will be rusty brown. With condensation, generally, the telltale sign is the formation of black spot mould. Kitchen cupboards and wardrobes fitted to, or close to, cold outside walls invariably suffer from condensation and mould, as the air inside becomes cold and does not circulate. Bay windows are another problem area, as they project beyond the building line and cool. The bay often contains large furniture that reduces air circulation and therefore the wall surface becomes damp. These are not normally indications of the presence of rising or penetrating damp. Difference number three, how to treat them. Given the separate causes of the two damp problems we are discussing, it follows that each will have distinct treatment methods. To solve rising damp problems, it is essential that you stop the water entering the property in the first place. 
Given that rising damp problems are only found when a damp proof course either isn't present or has become cracked or deteriorated over time, the most common solution is to install a remedial damp proof course. Using the injection method, our specialists apply a damp proof solution directly into the mortar bed near the base of the wall. When this cures, it creates a waterproof barrier. After application, the drill holes are filled and the wall replastered with salt inhibiting plaster to create a fresh and welcoming environment free from rising damp. The main method to solve condensation problems is to remove large items away from cold outside walls and to introduce a source of ventilation into the property. This could be as simple as keeping a window open in affected rooms or making use of extractor fans if you have them in your kitchen or bathroom. Unfortunately, some persistent and serious condensation problems are resistant to this and may require you to install a ventilation system in the home like our positive input ventilation units. These flush out damp and humid air and replace it with fresh, clean air. If you think you have a damp problem in your home and are still having problems determining whether it is rising damp or condensation, we recommend getting in contact with a professional, experienced and qualified damp surveyor to visit the property and accurately diagnose the problem.